Welcome, Facebook. Um, we're in First Peter chapter five today. We just listened to my favorite. We just sang it together. We watched it on the big screen here, and uh, Amy Grant was singing "Hark the Herald Angels Sing." It's my very favorite Christmas carol because it's full of scripture. I love Christmas. Uh, I make much of Jesus during Christmas. You said Jesus wasn't born on December twenty fifth. I know he wasn't. I didn't say he was, but he was born, wasn't he? I was glad to see uh, uh, in our White House that uh, uh, the president's wife, uh, she, they showed the decorations and things, and, and, they, and they showed the, uh, uh, they put the uh, manger scene back in the White House. You know, you know the manger scene, which has been in there for years and years. The manger scene was taken out of the White House for eight years. Uh, do you know who took it out of the White House? Barack Obama. Eight years he pulled it out of the White House. Uh, what's Trump's wife's name? Melania. Melania. Yeah. She 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 put the major scene back in, and they showed a picture of the presidential uh, Christmas card that was sent out, and it said uh, "Merry Christmas." For eight years, it didn't say "Merry Christmas." You know what it said? "Happy Holidays." I begin to think Barack Obama didn't think much of Jesus. Yeah, I mean that. Uh, uh, yeah, I think he might be Muslim because when he was over in that Muslim nation, he bowed over and kissed a Muslim's hand or something. I've heard that think too much of our country either. No, I didn't. Uh, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know why? Uh, 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 you know why? Uh, uh, how can we have the president of the United States that is hero? And his training came from Saul Alinsky. Anybody know who Saul Alinsky is? Uh, Saul Alinsky wrote a, a book that was Barack Obama's hand manual. The name of the book that Saul Alinsky wrote. Read, I've read it. Look it up and read it. It's called Rules for Radicals, written by Saul Alinsky. And it's how to train community organizers. Does that sound familiar, community organizer? Who was a community organizer before he was president? Barack Hussein Obama. Now, I think he's more Muslim than he is Christian. They had uh, they used to show stuff uh, during Ramadan. The uh, Muslim hold, they had all kinds of big shindigs at the White House during Ramadan. You know, yeah. I've seen it and everything. So anyway, I'm glad we got. Uh, Merry Christmas on the presidential uh, Christmas card. And I'm glad we got the manger scene back in the White House. Amen? Amen. I'm glad we're getting back uh, with the new president. Now, he's not perfect. In fact, what I'm preaching about today goes exactly against what, what Trump is completely. The preaching today and, and, and what I sent out from 1 Peter 5 today was on humility and the humility of Christ and, and the humility of what a Christian... Now, I mean, the exact opposite of, of humility is Donald Trump. He is so proud and arrogant and full of himself. I mean, I wish he knew how he sounded when he's always, he did this and he did that. Do well, you, know, you, you ever notice that? When he, I mean, he's so proud and arrogant. Don't get me wrong. I like him a lot better than the one he succeeded. But he's got a whole bunch of pride. And, he, and pride cometh before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. He needs to be saved. I don't care what these TV evangelists said. They, 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 I've got four or five of them that these big time TV evangelists oh, I led Donald Trump to Christ. I don't think so. You can't come to Christ proud and arrogant. The only way you can come to Christ is with humility. I mean that. You can't be saved unless you have the humility of a child. Did you know that? That keeps a lot of people from salvation. 
Let's get in the first. So I'm glad. I'm glad we got the manger scene back in the White House, and I'm glad on the on the presidential Christmas card we got Merry Christmas again instead of Happy Holidays. Amen. Amen. All right. Now we just got to get a president saved, get him off that high horse, and humble him so he can get no no Christ. First, First Peter five verse one. The elders which are among you, I exhort. Whom also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ. What an elder is, that's just a preacher, a leader in the church. That's what an elder is. I'm, I'm, you call me preacher, you call me pastor. I'm an elder. I'm an elder in the church. I, I'm a preacher. I, I, I lead a congregation. That's what an elder is. And, and he said here, uh, the elders which are among you, I exhort. He's exhorting other preachers. Who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Verse 2. Now he's talking to me and other elders or other pastors. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof. You see, I'm an overseer. You need to have a, uh, you need to have a pastor to oversee you. I I'm not trying to make you, so you're trying to, Make yourself a big shot. No, I'm not trying to make myself a big shot at all. I'm just, I'm an overseer in the church. I'm an elder in the church. And I, ha I have a responsibility. You that are, uh, uh, that, that, that's why the local church is so important. <clears throat> you need to be part of a local church <clears throat> because Christians need oversight. You say, uh, I don't need no one to watch over me but God. You're a rebel. You got you full of rebellion. I'm a free spirit. I don't report to nobody but God. Oh, there's something wrong with you. You need oversight. Everybody needs oversight. Everybody has those that watch for their soul, and there are overseers, which I am. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof. I have that position. Not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. I'm not a money grabber. I can tell you about Benny Hinn. I can tell you about Oral Roberts. I can tell you about John, Jimmy Swaggart. I can tell you about a thousand other money grabbers that are on television and that pastor a church, and, and uh, it's a money-making machine for them. I am not a money-grabbing preacher. I never have been. All through my ministry, uh, the, only, the only time when I really took a salary uh, and uh, I had a regular income as a as a pastor was when I pastored at the day, at the at the uh, Milwaukee Rescue Mission. <coughs> when, when I was there, I had a, I had a, a salary and an income. I I have very little here. I get some housing allowance. That's all. I'm supposed to get a salary from the mission and from the church here that I pastor the church and the mission. I don't. I, I get a little bit of uh, uh, housing allowance. Uh, that's it. I'm not a money grabbing preacher. Uh, you you might, and I've been accused of it. I had I had someone here that that was here, one of our workers and everything. I thought they were faithful and and they were here and everything, and and they left and had all kinds of bad things to say about the Lord and about this preacher and on and on. Called me a money grabber. I mean, one thing I ain't is a money grabber. I, uh, I pay my own, I, I'll tell you one thing. I've donated tons more money to this mission than I've taken from this mission. I mean, for, first year I was here, I'm not bragging, but first year I was here when this, when this, uh, uh, when I started this mission in 1992, I put $5,000 into it. I mean, my, out, of, out of my pocket. Out of my pocket. Out of that wallet, 1992, 50 grand. So uh, I, I ain't a money grabber, and I uh, never have been in ministry. I did get a salary from uh, the Milwaukee Rescue Mission when I was there. But there's money grabbing preachers, and there's, there's plenty of them. And watch out for them. It warns against them right here, doesn't it? It says, uh, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Verse 3. 
neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. I'm not a dictator. I'm not a, I'm not a, a dictator over you. I'm supposed to be, and I try to be, an example of what you should be, that you can follow me, and we can work together and go forward, all having our equal equal place as Christians, equal as Christians, but positions in the church as Christians, you understand. That's the way it's supposed to be. Verse 5. Likewise, uh, no, verse 4. And when the chief shepherd, who's the chief shepherd? Jesus. I'm an under-shepherd. Jesus Christ is the chief shepherd. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, and he could come today, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. I'm looking for my, my uh, uh, crown of glory as an under-shepherd, under the chief shepherd, Jesus Christ. Likewise, ye younger, verse, I, I, I text this out today. Listen up now, this is a texting. If you're not on my texting and you have a, you're able to get texts, let me know what your phone number is. I'll text to you and pray for you every day. I text over 200 people every day now and pray for them. You want to be texted to? I'm glad to. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another. Now, subject one to another. It means know, uh, know your place and follow authority. That's what that means. I mean, I can't rule over Gary and Gary rule over me. I mean, uh, you got to have a boss. You got to have someone in charge. I mean, that, that's just way just way it works in business world. You got to have someone that runs it in the church. You got to have a boss. You say, "Oh, you're trying to make a, I'm not. God's appointed me to be an be a shepherd, under shepherd, under Jesus Christ." Uh, uh, but so, but we have to submit. You know, a lot of people don't want to ever submit. You want to do your own thing. You want to be a free spirit. You don't want to listen to anybody at all. That's like the one we had. I had we had a gigantic Sunday school, a couple thousand people between a thousand and two thousand in in Milwaukee when I ran the mission in Milwaukee, and uh, and a lady come in there and and we had a big crowd and I I, I preached to the uh, adults in the main auditorium. We had a twelve hundred and fifty seat auditorium. It was an old junior high school. It was a gigantic building, two hundred and three thousand square feet, and it had two gymnasiums and it was a whole block of property. And one of my workers came and say, there's a lady wandering around out here in the halls going in and out of classrooms. And I said, well, tell her she's got to come in here in the adult class. And uh, she won't come. Well, I had someone else take over the, in the meeting where I was leading there and went out in the hall. And I said, ma'am, you're going to have to come in the uh, uh, auditorium uh, with the adults. That's the adult classes in there. Uh, she says, no, I don't care to do that. She says, I'm just going to wander around and go in and out of these classes. And she looked at me and smiled. I says, no, you're not. I says, you're going to come in. And... I said, I ain't going to go into your class. I said, well, then you're going to go out the door. She says, you don't understand. I'm a free spirit. I do what I want. I says, you don't do what you want here. She says, you mean you're going to put me out because I want to wander around? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm telling you. Now, you already interrupted my Sunday school class. Now, get out. He said, well, I don't think a, I don't think a, a, a pastor ought to do that. Well, you, you, you do what you think. Just like someone uh, yesterday morning, they tried to come sleep on our property here, a guy and a girl. And... Uh, I called him out there. I says, folks, you can't stay here. I can't have people on the property here at night. And then uh, I said, you have to leave. Uh, then I, a couple of my workers found him, and they kept doing it. And they were here yesterday morning, and they were leaving while I was pulling up. So I drove. I went around here, and I caught them over here on Fifth Street and Ridge. But I said, hey, come on over here. And they come on and says, now look, I was nice to you. My workers were nice to you. What I got to do to keep you off the property? I can't have people. If I let you sleep on a, pr a property, and I let people that are homeless sleep on my property, I'm going to have 100 people here on my property. 
I mean, you don't think, yeah, you don't think the, the word goes fast? What not get? I'm sleeping everywhere. Oh my! They and they do. They come. They and uh, and I'm pretty sure they were smoking crack or smoking something else, some of that new stuff they use. And they come here and and uh, hide in the corner over here and and on and on. I, I said, now I, I, I got to be straight with. You. I says, look, if you're if you're here again, the cops are gonna get you. And uh, the girl, <laughs> you know what the girl said to me. You're a nasty preacher. <laughs> You're a nasty bit. I said, she tells you. I tried to be nice to her, ask her to leave. My workers told them to leave. But sometimes you're just like that free spirit lady. You got to have rules and regulations. You must have authority. You understand what I'm talking about? If you don't have authority, you know what you have? You have anarchy. You have everybody doing what they want. What, 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 what if we didn't have any red lights out here, any stop signs or any speed limits? You think people, everybody just be driving nice and let everybody go in front of them? Man, they'd be piling the cars and trucks up out here like crazy. You know what I'm They're talking about? Huh? They already do it now and they got, they got lost. <laughs> what did you say, Christy? It's like after Irma, all the lights were out. Yeah. All the street lights. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they had a lot of accidents. Yeah, well, anyway, let's go on. Got to have authority. Uh, submission. For God, re uh, but listen, this is the key to the sermon today, and it's the message you want to get out. And be clothed with humility. What is a Christian supposed to be? Clothed with humility. That means humbleness ought to be all over you. You ought to be a humble person. Exactly the opposite of our president. I like a lot of things about it. President Trump. I voted for him. But one thing he doesn't have is humility. I mean, he's the most powerful man in the world. And if you say something about him or do him wrong, he's going to get you. <laughs> he don't forget. Ask the, uh, ask the 17 uh, Republicans that were in the primaries that were against him. He took them all down, didn't he? He had names for them and everything. Uh, and he, he's kind of... <laughs> I love what he said. Did you see on the TV? It was the day before yesterday. Uh, uh, he had... Uh, uh, we, we had some... Uh, uh, we had some Indians. I call them Indians. They say he's supposed to call them. I, mean, I always call them Indians. They lived here before we did. And I guess they call them Native Americans now or something. I'm not a politically correct person. Uh, you don't take long to figure that out. But anyway, uh, 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 he was. Um, they, they 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 had some Indians that during the war, they they did it in the in in the Indian language for secrecy, and they, and they helped our country a lot. Navajo. Uh, was it Navajos? Yeah, we're yeah. Navajos. Whatever. I, I forget that probably what it was. But he 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 gave a special honor in that. And then he had to, like Trump is. This is what he did. He was on there and he says, yeah, we had someone that uh, claimed to be of Indian heritage, you know. And uh, he says on, <laughs> in front of this big, <laughs> he says her name, Pinocchio, uh, not Pinocchio. What is it? What do you call her? What was that Indian? Pocahontas. <laughs> Pocahontas. Anybody, anybody know who he calls Pocahontas? Uh, that liberal. Uh, she lied. Uh, Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren. That's Pocahontas. And 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 the reason he calls her Pocahontas is because when uh, when when she was applied for uh, some kind of a, something at Harvard University and thing, she claimed to be a Native American, and somebody called her on it. She ain't no Indian. And so Trump named her Pocahontas. <laughs> and they made such a fuss about it. They, the, the, the liberal uh, reporters asked the press secretary, uh, uh, the governor's daughter, uh, she's, I think she's a good press secretary. They said, don't you think it's terrible that, uh, uh, that the president used a, a, a racial slur in front of the these Native Americans that served the country, and, and, and she said, oh, no, it had nothing to do with a racial slur. 
It had to do with a crooked Elizabeth Warren who tried to lie about her heritage to further her cause. That's what it was all about. That's why he calls her Pocahontas. I mean, he, Trump is that way. He, he, he put a nickname on you, the stick. He even said it in front of the Navajo Indians. on <laughs> So he's a different kind of president. He's for sure not very presidential. <laughs> but he has his fun, and he says what he's going to say, and, and he's kind of in your face with it now. I mean, he's the most powerful man in the world. That's president of the United States. A lot of people trying to kill him, too. Don't you think they're not? Every day of his life, someone trying to kill him. They better protect him. I wouldn't have never, if I was him being president and the way he's hated that, I never went over there in the Middle East or anything. Uh-uh. I mean, you can't have enough security guys around you get in there with all them uh, uh, Muslims and, and the communists and stuff. They want to take him out. Let's get back to the Bible. It says here, and giveth grace to the humble. Be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud. Mr. Trump, every proud person, like Mr. Trump, he resisteth the proud. I don't care if you're president of the United States. God will not put up with pride and arrogance. The proud go to hell. The humble go to heaven. Did you hear me? The proud go to hell. The humble go to heaven. Yeah. Resist the proud, but give it grace to the humble. You see, grace is unmerited favor. Proud people don't get grace. The only people get grace is humble people. You understand? The only person get grace is a humble person, not a proud person. That's the way it is. So it says, verse 6, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. What we're to do is humble ourselves and submit to God. Yeah. Now this is verse 6. I mean verse 7. Look at verse 7. Look at it here with me. Cast all your care upon him. Who? Jesus. Cast all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Isn't it wonderful that God cares for us? Isn't it wonderful that, that God loves us and cares for us? So I just have to humbly trust in Him and cast my care. You don't have to have cares. You don't have to worry about anything. Some of you are homeless. Some of you don't have a roof over your head right now. Someone just told me lately, well, you know, it's very difficult. This certain person was talking about another person, never been without a roof over their head. That's a tough way. You know, but I tell you, if you trust in God, you might be in a situation right now where you don't have a roof over your head. Thank God if you do, be thankful for it. But you can humble yourself and trust God even if you don't have a roof over your head today. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. Now here's the battle. Verse 8. Here's the battle. Be sober. You drunks that are in here today. We had some admit they're drunks yesterday. You ones that are drinking, always running for a drink. It says, get sober. Thank God I've been saved 48 years and 8 months. Haven't had a bottle of beer. Haven't had no whiskey. Close I came to bourbon was a bourbon cake I ate this morning. And that ain't got no alcohol in it. <laughs> Good cake. You're going to have it for dessert today. Be sober. Be vigilant. That's tenacious. Stay at it. You ever heard that term they used to have about vigilantes? They'd go after something. Amen? A vigilante has a cause and they go after it. You as a Christian, I as a Christian, we're to be sober, we're to be vig vig uh, vigilant. Why? Because your adversary... The devil. You see what it says here in verse 8? Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Does the devil ever get after you, huh? He gets after me. I bet you if he gets after this preacher, I bet you he gets after you too. He might get after you with alcohol. He might get after you with sex. He might get after you with uh, whatever your sin is. 
The devil gets you a hundred different ways. Yeah, your adversary, the devil, has a roaring lion walking about, seeking whom he may devour. So what do you do when the devil's seeking after you? Remember what it said, be sober, be vigilant. So if you're going to be sober and vigilant, that's covered in verse 9 here. Look at verse 9. Whom resist steadfast in the faith. What's the faith? The faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only faith that'll that'll keep you to have victory over the devil. You see, faith in Christ, uh, it forgives you sins and takes you out of hell and sends you to heaven. Amen? And then that faith that saved you will also keep you, keep you from sin. Think about it right now. I'm, I'm, a th I'm thinking about myself now. Think about this. Think about some besetting sin that gets you. Your sin might not be mine and might not be yours. But there's a sin that gets you. Now listen a minute. Uh, how many, you thought about it for a minute, and you do have a sin or probably sins that gets you. Can, can any of you think of some sin that gets you? Raise your hand. I can think. I can think. I bet you think a little bit. I bet you can think of one, Joe. I bet you can think of one, Diane. I bet you can. I bet you everybody in here, you think about it a minute, you can think about some sin that gets you. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. But the same faith, now first of all, there's some of you that are in here that aren't saved. You need to get saved today. And the faith that will save you will keep you. The, safe that's, the, the faith that saved me on April 4th, 1969, that same faith that saved me April 4th, 1969, that faith that saved me April 4th, 1969, that's the same faith that will keep me from sin today. And as this verse says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Resist steadfastly in the faith. So in the faith that saved me, or the faith that will save you today if you're not saved, and the, resist steadfastly in the faith, the faith of Christ. You're saved by faith, you're kept from sin by faith, not by resolution. You can have all the resolution you want and try to stop sinning. You'll still sin without faith. God will keep you from your sin. By faith. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. You know, the temptations I have, the sin that tries to lure me is the same one tries to get you. Amen? The sin that allures you, yeah, tries to lure me. Amen? Because sin is, it goes around trying to get everybody, doesn't it? Tries to get everybody. But if we resist steadfastly in the faith, the faith of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ saves us, and the blood of Jesus Christ keeps us from sin. How wonderful. Amen. Verse 10, But the God of all grace who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, salvation, heaven. After that ye have suffered a while. We, have, we suffer here following Christ. After that ye have suffered a while. Make you perfect, establish, strengthen, set. You know I'm going to be perfect one day? You know this sin that so easily besets you and I? You mean we're not going to have it anymore when we're in heaven, amen? When I die... And when you die as a Christian, you won't have no more sin. You'll be perfect like Jesus. Amen. Won't that be wonderful? Aren't you glad that we'll be through with it and we won't have to uh, be grabbed down in this sin that so easily besets us that we've read about here in the devil, a roaring lion. Even after we're saved, he gets us down, doesn't he? Huh? Gets me down, gets you down. Verse 11, and we're done. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Jesus Christ, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Humble yourself. Are you? If you're not humble, you can't be saved. Humble yourself like a child and get saved. And after you're saved, humble yourself. And the faith that saved you will keep you from sin because of humility. And suffered reproach of Christ, as we looked at in the book of Hebrews. Suffered the reproach of Christ. Oh, how wonderful it is. It's great scripture. Look it over. 
later in the day. Let's close in prayer. Lord, thank you now for the grace of God. We can humble ourselves and be saved, and we can, by faith, be kept from sin, as it's told us very clearly today. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed here. You say, Pastor, I'm a saved person. You're in the church now, and you say, I know I'm saved, and going to heaven, will you slip your hand up? Let me see that. Yeah, okay. All right. Some could raise their hands. A number of you could. You say, Pastor, I don't know I'm saved, but I, I need to be saved. And I want you to pray for me. I could be saved. I'm not sure I'm saved. Would you slip your hand up? Let me see your hands. Just slip it up. I'm not sure if I die tonight, I'd go to heaven. You know, there's a number of you people couldn't raise your hand that you're saved, and you're not raising your hand that you want to be saved. That That troubles me. It should trouble you, too. Because if you don't know you're saved and you don't want prayer for salvation, there's no hope for you but the fiery wrath of God in hell forever and ever. I hope you'll wake up soon. How about out there on Facebook? I hope you'll trust Christ. Facebook audience, turn from your sins. Humble yourself. Believe in Christ. I'm going to pray the sinner's prayer. I pray those that aren't saved here in the church. Those that are out on Facebook will get saved right now. This is a prayer. Pray it in your heart. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and shed your precious blood. On Calvary's cross, rose from the grave the third day. The best I know how, with an honest heart, I turn from my sins, receive you as my Savior. Thank you for saving me right now. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Anybody here in the church, you asked Jesus to save you today. You weren't saved, but you did pray and you meant it and asked him to save you today. You humbled yourself, asked Jesus to save you. Would you slip your hand up if you did it today? Anybody in the, aud in the auditorium here? Anybody at all? How about you out there on Facebook? Anybody trusted Christ? I hope you have. If you have, let us know about it. God bless you. This is a wonderful chapter. It tells about humility salvation about how to beat the roaring lion the devil help us to do it we're going to sign off facebook now goodbye <laughs>